Good afternoon all, how are you? Um, I was just looking at this LTC 3780, LTC 3780, yeah that's right, uh, board, and I noticed it's got a little um, three position switch thing here with the switch not fitted, but I'm pretty sure I've got a switch that will fit that. So really this is just a quickie, I just wanted to see what that switch does, so I'm going to solder a switch in there and give it a try. My guess is that it'll turn the output on and off, but let's try it. So I've put some uh, connectors on here, an input connector and an output connector. Let's plug in the input and I'm not quite sure, I have got an output, but I'm not quite sure what the voltage is. Uh, so I don't want to connect my bulb and blow it up. So I'm just going to check that with the DVM. And it is, hmm, 20 volts. That's quite a lot. Um, now, which one of these pots does voltage? I actually don't know. So we're going to have to just see what happens when I twiddle them. Oh yeah, that seems to be doing voltage, that end one. So let's bring that down to 12 volts. I don't know what the current limit is set to. Of course, the capacitors will take a while to react, won't they? 12.4, let's go for exactly 12. Uh, oh, there's some uh, backlash in this pot. Right, that'll do. 12.1, that'll do. So let's connect my bulb now, which is here. And uh, yeah, that's all good. That lights up. Now the question is, does this on off switch? And I can test this actually, even without putting a, a switch in there, because I think if I've uh, checked this correctly, this end pin goes off somewhere and the middle one is connected to ground. So if I short those together, um, I should be able to implement this on off facility. So let's do that with some tweezers. Uh, right, we don't need that on anymore. Right, so let's just short these two pins together. Ah, okay, so the little red fault light comes on. The bulb goes off. And the output LED goes off when I've shorted these two pins. And yes, that works as an on off and that might be quite handy because I kind of want an on off switch uh, on this unit because I want to use it to charge some super capacitors. Right, so I'm just going to warm the soldering iron up. Here's the little switch. Now do these pins fit through these holes in the board? Let's find out. Oh, it does. Oh, that looks rather good. So I'll solder that switch in there and then I can switch this unit on and off. So a bit of blue tack to um, hold that switch at the right angle there. Just put that on there so that it's sitting right where I want it. Good. So let's solder that on the back and then clip off those pins. Actually, perhaps I should explain what um, I'm planning to do. What I want to do is charge um, a supercapacitor bank with six supercapacitors, so to about 16.2 volts. But the listing for these power supplies say anti-backfeed, no, anti-backfeed protection, no. If you're charging a battery on the output of this, put a diode in series with it so that it doesn't backfeed into this unit. Well, what I want to do is start charging a capacitor bank to, I don't know, maybe a low voltage to start with, 3 volts, 5 volts, 8 volts, um, and then switch this thing off and see whether I, I get any significant back feed, and I suppose more importantly, whether this device actually blows up. So um, I'll keep taking the capacitor bank to higher and higher voltages with no uh, series protection diode, just to see whether this thing is happy with um, a capacitor pack having 16.2 volts, feeding this when it's off, um, will it discharge rapidly? Will this catch fire? Will everything go wrong? Or will it be entirely happy? I hope the latter. Right, let's do this. I'm using the old Antex. Um, so the middle pin is going to be an absolute nightmare because I can see that it's actually connected to the main copper area. So that one's not going to solder easily, but these end two should solder without any difficulty. Right, let's try the middle one. This is going to be difficult because it's on the copper, I think there's copper top side and copper bottom side, so that's going to be a pig to solder. Let's wait till this warms up a bit, and if it doesn't work, 
I'll have to get the temperature controlled soldering iron. And I've just noticed, as I'm sure you have, that um, these pots are labelled actually. CV, constant voltage, CC, constant current, and UV, which is the under voltage. I think this particular circuit has uh, under voltage protection for the input. So it protects against, if you've got, a, say, a battery here supplying this, it protects against that dropping to too low a voltage. And I think when it does, that fault light comes on again, saying that the input side has gone under volt. Yes, I don't think this iron is going to solder this middle pin, or if it does, it'll take so long that I run the risk of damaging the switch. So yes, I think I'm going to have to get the temperature controlled soldering iron, but I really don't want to, and I'll show you why. Um, it's because here's my desk, and you can see that it's a total mess, and if I come over here, this stuff is all piled up here, and the temperature controlled soldering iron is there. So all of that lot has to move. It's just a bit of a nuisance. And uh, I'm very grateful to Adam for sending me this soldering iron, but it is all a bit of a palaver because you've got that unit, uh, this unit, the soldering iron itself. Um, that's all gone a bit rusty, hasn't it? So let's get all this plugged in and set up. Right, let's see if I do any better with this one. That's up to 300 degrees. Solder. Oh yes, it is hotter. Still taking a while to penetrate the board though. Yes, I think that's taken. I could perhaps go even hotter still, but yes, that has worked. Yeah, this is a bit silly really. They could have done with some um, thermal bridges out to the, the copper ground plane it's a bit naughty just plonking it straight in the middle of it it was even then it was still quite difficult to solder you just can't get it warm because there's so much copper around it right let's clip these off including that middle one and uh, just give it a, another quick try with that switch in place and uh, yeah that works fine on and it's even the right way around according to the little on off legend on turns my output on off turns my fault light on and turns my output off fantastic cheerio